Support Wrestle Talk. Give us a subscribe. Hello and welcome to the Wrestle Talk News. I'm Ollie Davis and I'll be replying to as many comments on this video as I can. Easter is a time for families to come together over chocolate eggs and something about resurrection. Families, resurrection. In professional wrestling terms, that pretty much describes the brothers of destruction. But Kane's happy Easter message and photo on Twitter makes absolutely zero reference to his dead man half-brother, The Undertaker. I guess there's the whole Undertaker burning Kane's family alive and permanently scarring his face thing. But whose family is perfect? Certainly not the office environment of WWE. Lead SmackDown Live commentator Mauro Ranello hasn't been on WWE TV since early March because of depression. And it looks unlikely that he'll return before his contract expires in August. Ranello is a well-known sufferer of bipolar disorder, which he was first diagnosed with aged 19. And WWE's reported bullying corporate culture, specifically the actions of Moro's SmackDown Live commentary partner, JBL, apparently caused this most recent bout of depression. All but confirming reports he's now done with the company, Ranello is now taking announcing jobs outside WWE. The first of which being last night for Japanese MMA promotion Risen, broadcast live on the Fight TV app. Ahead of the show, Ranello took a shot at SmackDown Live's 19-man commentary booth on Twitter. I'm so excited to be back. The fact it's only a two-man booth makes me even happier. And then on the actual broadcast, when introducing Jazzy Gabbard, Ranello made fun of WWE's infamous ban on the phrase professional wrestling. Professional wrestler and boy does it feel good to be able to use that term again, turned mixed martial artist the alpha female. Not done there, when promoting his on-air role for this coming weekend's Andre Berto vs Sean Porter fight on Showtime, Moro tweeted, You best believe I'll be calling pro wrestling again too. Fist bump emoji. Ranello's WWE contract expires on the 12th of August, a date the company seemed to be preparing damage limitation for, according to the Wrestling Observer. Ranello's contract doesn't allow him to give unauthorized interviews on WWE, and the belief is that WWE is working hard to come to a settlement that would include an agreement that he not publicly talk about the issue. The Moro situation appears to be so irreparable with WWE that Vince McMahon didn't even try moving JBL and Ranello away from each other in last week's Superstar Shake-Up. Instead, the only announcers who made the switch were David Atunga to Raw and Byron Saxton to SmackDown. But Atunga won't actually be making his Monday night commentary debut for another six weeks. Mr. Jennifer Hudson is starring as edgy DEA agent James Weld Lawson in the new movie Katrina. Rather than just making it a much more preferable two-man booth or even getting Moro to fill in to save face, WWE have announced that Booker T will join Michael Cole and Corey Graves on Raw for the next month and a half. Talking to the Roman show, however, Booker might want it to go a tad longer. I bring my own style. I don't speak like they do. I speak for the people. I think it'll be refreshing. I am going to be there for six weeks for now, but you never know. Nothing against Booker T, but WWE have a perfectly good Jim Ross sitting right there. JR returned to the company for WrestleMania 33, calling what appears to be The Undertaker's final match. This was not a one-off appearance, as the Wrestling Observer Newsletter reporting the new two-year deal is for him to work between 30 to 40 dates for the company. This is, sadly, quite a way shy of the 52-date schedule needed to call weekly TV. The brand new episode of Wrestle Sketch is now live about how the Superstar Shake-Up was decided and watch Luke Owen and I work out whether Matt and Jeff Hardy should turn broken in WWE. Click the videos to the left to find out more and press subscribe. I've been Ollie Davis and that was Wrestling.